corporations right now are in a tremendous state of shock. Think of it as a hundred yard dash and, and we're at the uh, starting block. We got to get going here. And the competition is at the 50 yard line. I went there. I was there. I was there. I saw it. I touched it. I could have licked it if I wanted to. Fear is everywhere. You've got uh, golden handcuffs and shackles at the same time. You can't afford to lose your job because you bought the house that you really didn't need, but you wanted to impress everybody. He enjoys watching morons. I believe that he really, I mean, it's like you go to the circus and you watch the clowns and, you, and you're happy, right? If you can control the media, you control yeah. everything. If you say no a lot, you lose, but you'll get promoted. But if you say yes a lot, you're going to make enemies of the yin yang yeah. and uh, or you'll win. And then you'll make a lot of money, a huge amount. I can't even hardly think of a time, um, not necessarily in my lifetime, even with my dad and, and grandparents and whatnot, when I've seen so much so much transition, so much excitement, so many, so many things. It's just absolutely stunning, absolutely really? stunning the amount of, uh, of things that are going on. So uh, are this we taping specifically? already? Are we already on? Or yeah, we? I mean, I, we can start oh, yeah. right away. Yeah, I mean. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I would just. Uh, no, yeah. dude, we know we're super informal. I mean, like this is, yeah. we always call our, us the, a shittier Joe Rogan. You know, so it's like <laughs> we just. <laughs> shitty Joe Rogan. Yeah, just oh, a wow. shitty Joe Rogan. Wow, yeah. Wow, so. Wow. I'm actually curious about that. If, if I mean, if, if if you're comfortable sharing, like, is it is it manufacturing? Is it automotive? Like, what is what is that sort of crazy transitionary period you're seeing, or is it just engineering? Like, what what are you seeing? What I'm seeing is uh, this isn't just engineering and whatnot. This is like corporations trying to make the most difficult decisions that they'll ever make in their whole lives. I mean, uh, wow. corporate corporations right now are in a tremendous state of shock with uh with the the chinese with the electrification with the there's so many things going on that it's 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 impossible for most of these executives to move they're they're paralyzed in in a lot of cases i mean i i've been talking to quite a few execs and um they have they don't know like okay so there's a a huge amount of uh controversy associated with this election, this is without a question of a doubt, um, like nothing I've ever seen before. Um, uh, I mean, you got rock stars and singers and stuff like that, um, all uh, parading around trying to get people to vote. And I've seen that in the past, but I've never seen anything like this. Eminem never gives uh, speeches for anybody ever. Um, and and people vote for that. They don't vote for the president. Oh, I saw him and M on stage. What? And <laughs> so at at the end of the day, you've got you've got that kind of stuff happening. You've got um, promises. Woohoo! There's some serious promises going out here, and there are huge threats. We're being invaded. I mean, this isn't. Uh, you and I are both immigrants, and uh, and it wasn't a picnic getting into this country. Well, it is now, and 24 million? Are you shitting me? I mean, that's an invasion. So you've got things going on that I, I've i never heard of or seen or been a part of anything like this ever before in my whole life. And I, 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 I'm a big history buff. I've never seen it in history either. We've never had invasions like this. Never. Never. No. That's like amazing. And the, and the, the, the angst and the, I mean, it's a shit show. I can't walk around here without two guys arguing about, I mean, not arguing, almost getting into a fist fight over who's going to be the next president. Man, this ain't, this is not like anything in my 75 years. Anyways, this is like nothing I've ever seen before. Nothing. This is like a, a horror show. It's a media horror show. Um, because quite frankly, that's how, what sells paper, right? If it bleeds, it reads or leads yeah. or whatever. I can't remember. But at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's just, it's just a, a horrific. Um, yeah. we've lost our ability to just have a discussion and walk away. Now it's like, you know, you start flicking knives out and whatnot. It's, 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 it's not the American way. I'd like to not. double click on the, 
what the corporate executive's reaction is to all that, if you don't mind, Sandy. You know, are are they more concerned right now about competition with China? Are they more concerned about the immigration concerns? Like what what are posing the biggest threats in in their world? Out of a 10, everything is an 11. They can't decide because there's no clear path on anything. Maybe after the election is over, if there isn't a riot or a civil war, uh, maybe something will happen then that, uh, that'll maybe uh, help steer them around it. But they already know that there's, the Chinese are coming and there's nothing you can do about it. They're already here. BYD has got, uh, BYD's got huge bus plants. They got, a, they got an, another plant ready to go to build cars. They're not, they're not going to walk up and get out. And if you think for a second, either president is going to keep money, you're nuts. All you have to do is look backwards a bit. You don't have to go back that far. In the 60s and 70s, when they tried the same bullshit, it didn't work then either. I mean, when the Japanese came in, oh, no, we're going to keep them out. Oh, things were a little different, you know. Uh, all the, uh, all the, and like I just heard, oh, you're not supposed to use the word gypsy. Really? Gypsy is a short form for Egyptian. They were booted out of Egypt and they went to Europe. What's the new? Oh, no, no, that's derogatory. Really? Really? <laughs> oh, this is like Oriental. Oh, yeah, that just means East. What the hell? Where is this coming from? Who invented this crap? Well, I'll tell you what. When I was a kid, all the little names that they had for the Japanese, man, yeah. I'll tell you what. There was no way that I was going to be. I had relatives that fought the Japanese. One was captured and tortured like there was no tomorrow. They didn't use those kind of words, but that was what you saw on a regular basis on TV. Remember, we had a war with these guys, and we did, and, uh, and they lost, and, uh, and a lot of bad stories and whatnot. Hey, buy American. Why? The stuff's crap in comparison to the Japanese stuff. On and on and on. And you know what? My dad, who said, no, nah, I'm never going to buy a Japanese car, guess what he did? Yeah. Yep. Why? Because they were better. And that's the American way. If it's better, somebody's going to buy it. If it's not better, they ain't going to buy it. And that's how you know it's time to make a move and you change to meet the markets. So the uh, the Mexican, sorry, the yeah, you know, well, the um, it's it's two Mexican invasions. One's going to be Chinese um, Chinese products. That's number one. And the second one is. They're not even Mexican. The Mexicans that are living in Mexico are pretty getting are getting very happy, and they're in the catbird seat. I'm telling you right now, um, if they're smart, they'll say uh, TTFN to the um, to the free trade agreement, and um, and they'll do whatever they want because they'll own everything from uh, uh, the Rio Grande down to Tierra uh, the uh, the tip of of South America. I mean, they're in. They they are the powerhouse. They're the United States now of everything south of um, uh, south of the Rio Grande, and and all these things have to be contemplated by. And it's not just automotive execs. <laughs> There's a lot of people that are really nervous. Everything from making barbecues to Barbie. I mean, it's like it's a big deal. There's a lot of stuff going on here because you know some fools. In the um, 80s or 90s, I don't know when uh, the biggest push was, but everything has to go to Mexico, offshore, 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 send it, or not Mexico, sorry, to, uh, to China, offshore, off send it out, get it out as quickly as you can. Oh, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Really? What, do you, what about the people that are left behind? I mean, what about that? Never mind that shit, we got to make money. Okay, you did. And the people that were left behind, they found other things to do. And now those people that were left behind, they'll find other cars to buy. That's wow. what you get. Yeah, so, so do you feel do you feel like the the last decade, like this dynamic from the last decades, right? Pushing manufacturing out of the country, you know, for the sake of lowering prices, which is also empowering your adversaries in a way, right? So now China has gained a ton of power. Um, you know, you want to have some sort of like nice relationship with them, obviously in the long term, but you're allowing a, a lot of other countries to gain a lot of prominence from a manufacturing perspective. And then during that time, the U.S. wind they wound down their manufacturing capability yeah. up until recently, it seems like. And so from what I'm hearing from you, tell me if this is a fair characterization. It seems like it seems like the broader 
public in the United States, at least the ones that can actually enact change and put these gears into motion are realizing, oh shit, like this is like the, the bottom of the ninth inning. And if we don't, don't do something immediately, it's like, like our prominence, our ability to influence, our ability to manufacture, our ability to be competitive will be long gone. Is that a fair characterization of what, what you went through just now? If you're in the ninth inning, you got a chance. You got oh, a sure. chance. Okay. Okay. Think of it as a hundred yard dash. Okay. And, and we're at the uh, starting block. We got to get going here. And the competition is at the 50 yard line. Yikes. That's where we are right now. Okay. That isn't coming across, but that's where we are right now. And, and, and quite frankly, these guys, these, uh, the Chinese uh, companies, they've been taught to build quality at the very highest level. Toyota, Bentley, Volkswagen, General Motors, BMW, everybody, everybody was building their cars in China, teaching the Chinese how to build the perfect car. The only thing that was missing was engineering, the design and the, uh, and the engineering. And guess what? From 2014 to 2020, I never made so much money in my life because why? Because the Chinese were bringing people in that knew about how to design a car, how to engineer a car, how to make, uh, how to make uh, the minimum number of parts and the lightest vehicles possible, how to do everything we knew as to how to make batteries and whatnot because we were the lead and we all were going bankrupt because, oh, there's never going to be any problem here. We're just going to never have a problem. And so consequently, all the, uh, all the guys like me, all of us <laughs> went to China. Everybody said, go to China. Okay, good. I go there. And when I, I was in, um, uh, I I've told this story like 50 times, but anyways, I was in um, uh, Shanghai Automotive and uh, they have a huge, a gigantic uh, coffee room, uh, lounge actually, for people that are visiting and stuff like that, stuff like that. So I'm, uh, I'm standing at the thing and I'm waiting for a cappuccino. It's first thing in the morning, cappuccino and biscotti, what could be better? And all of a sudden I get big hands grabbing the back of my neck. Urban Row, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? It's an English guy. I knew him from both, both Bentley and Rolls Royce. I look around, Ooh. holy crap. All the guys from BMW are here. All the guys from, all the guys that I knew in Europe, they're all running around laughing and whatnot. We went, we went to their bar. They had their own damn bar. Okay, all these, there were so many of them, they controlled a bar in Shanghai. That's ponderous. And we were all making a shitload of money. And we were all happy as a clam because we were treated like kings instead of, oh, not another engineer. Can't we get rid of some of, the, uh, some of that overhead? All the best, the best. And I mean it sincerely. The best designers, the best guys for designing vehicles, the best guys for, for material science, the best guy, you name it, and they had it. And they had it in China. And that's why their cars basically are better than what we've got here. Because we do not spend enough money on that kind of stuff. And by the way, I know what I'm going to get, or you're going to get. Because I'm not I'll send it to any, you. I'll forward I'm not it to you. Give any, any comments. <laughs> I don't want any comments. It's but coming to your thing. inbox, Sandy. You better be ready. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So how much? How much did the Chinese invest from 2009 until 2023? And you know, not invest, but donate or whatever you want to call it. Okay. In, how much in what? Think? In the auto industry, so the uh, Chinese government. We always were hearing this all the time. Anyways, I checked it out. How much? Eight hundred billion. No, two hundred and sixty-three billion dollars. Okay. Okay. So, how much has the U.S. government supplied in the way of cash and incentives and everything else to the U.S. Um, uh, automakers? Uh, Forty billion. Just under one trillion dollars. One trillion. That is a much bigger number. There's no bees here. At the end of the day, blah blah blah, blah blah blah. Which hand do you which 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 blah blah do you want to do you want to uh, listen to? And and then you get inside the companies, and then you see this incredible political 
God. It's like, oh, don't just trust me. The horse is coming back. I mean, where the heck is this coming from? But people, when, they, uh, when they're in these kinds of situations where their whole background is going to change dramatically, um, I'm telling you flat, they, <laughs> they change. They, uh, uh, they, wa they want to have something that's secure to hang on to. Like a kid with uh, the little blanket, what was it, Linus or whatever that, and yeah. uh, Charlie Brown. He always had to have his blanket. <laughs> he, was a, he was wicked smart, everything like that. But that blanket didn't go anywhere. Nobody touches his blanket. And that's what's kind of happening. Some of these guys are wicked smart. No question about it. They're, they're not some of them, all of them. You don't get to be, you don't get up the ladder if you're a dummy. It doesn't work that way. But, uh, but they've all got their blankets. And a lot of those blankets are old and tattered and should have been thrown away. And he won't get a new blanket. And um, wow. they're fighting hard to go back to the good old days. And I've been there and the good old days weren't all that good. So there you are. So, so the uh, U.S. government has, has uh, invested, let's say, almost 5x, 4x to 5x the amount that China has. And it has produced a fraction of the capability than the Chinese have. And so the question becomes... How how does that change? Because we had we had um, we had Michael Dunn on on the show uh, a few months ago. I don't know if you're familiar with Michael, but he's a uh, he is a uh, somebody who's uh, who's lives a lot in China, I believe, in in the Asian markets. Uh, and he he's somebody who like tries to gain gain in intelligence and like understanding mm -hmm. of how the Chinese are doing manufacturing in the automotive industry. And he he sort of. He he spoke very much exactly in the same way that you did about the current state of affairs. That it's the Chinese are so far ahead of yeah. where the United States is that if something doesn't happen now, it's far too late. And it sounds that now we have another automotive industry expert in, in Sandy that's literally saying the same exact thing. In addition to people like Elon Musk saying the Chinese are our biggest competitors by far. And yeah. you know the fact that they're the Chinese continue to invest a ton of money into their automotive automotive sector, the growth of BYD, the the improvements they're making from a self driving perspective. It's like, but but now what I'm hearing though is like, okay, but you're talking to a lot of execs that are like, holy shit, like oh my god, like it's almost like they got got caught with their pants down in a way, and now they're like realizing like, holy shit, like what 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 happened, right? Like a sudden shift. I don't know. It's not a sudden shift. It's just that they got fed a lot of crap. No way. I'd be uh, at Harvard. the end of the day. Oh, I don't want to <laughs> yeah. get. That's you know everybody. Sandy says, rant. You gonna? Sandy <laughs> rant. No, no, I'm not going to do it. No, uh, the consulting world um, basically has a single voice. It doesn't matter which one of the big shots you you hire. They pretty much all sing the same uh, song. And that's why I'm so unpopular, because I don't sing that song. And mm. I remember the last time that I was in New York and I gave a, a speech. I mean, half the people walked out. What is this guy? What is he? Where is he from? Mars? I mean, doesn't he know? Didn't he hear from this company or that company or whoever? Didn't he? Did, hasn't he listened? Well, no, I, I didn't listen. I, I went there. I was there. I was there. I saw it. I touched it. I could have licked it if I wanted to. I, I didn't get this out of some magazine. I, I didn't get this because I, I'm a pretty good guesser from 4,000 miles away. No, that, that doesn't work for me. Uh, I, uh, Dr. Deming used to say, go Gimba. Um, a Gimba is just a, a go and see. It's got a bigger, yeah. longer name. But, but at the end, of the end of the day, doing a Gimba walk is kind of like what Dr. Deming used to say, this is the right thing to do. And that's what I did. And not only that, just like Dr. Deming, when he went to Japan, they had crap. They built nothing. Chinese, uh, Japanese junk is what these. Okay, so when I went there, he taught them how to manufacture because they already knew how to design stuff. And, and when I went to, to, uh, uh, to China, I taught them how to engineer stuff with the minimum number of parts, with the highest possible quality, with the lowest labor rate, the labor um, uh, input, on and on and on. Nobody was interested in that here. We'll just get a supplier to do that. Supplier doesn't have any control over it. It's a black box. At the end of the day, they made a lot of mistakes based on the information that they were handed by the people who are supposed to be in charge. 
or the that are supposed to um i don't know um supposed to give them the advice they need in order to do a good job happen. yeah <laughs> do, do a good job yeah yeah yeah, Man. Well, it's pretty far afield. I thought we were going to talk about something entirely different. Sandy, you just made this into a yeah. good Joe Rogan instead of a shitty Joe Rogan. Oh, really? Oh, <laughs> shitty Joe Rogan. Actually, Let, I, I'm yeah. pretty sure that uh, you and Joe are, in fact, when I squint, you kind of look the same. Oh, God. I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> uh, no, I'm kidding. I don't know. <laughs> He's great. Um, so <laughs> let, let me ask you this, this. I know Hans also wants to throw a few things in, but... Um, I've I've had the sense so so when I when I listen to 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 you speak, it's sort of re in re the sense I've had ever since I left Tesla, that and knowing knowing that I worked other jobs, knowing that I know a lot of people that work other jobs, the overall sense I had of the state of the United States corporate structure workforce whatever it is, I sense a lot of industrial base. I felt a lot of complacency. I felt a lot of like we we know what we're doing. Like it felt old. It felt legacy. It felt slow. It felt entrenched. It felt corrupt in 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 some senses too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's a fair characterization of where America has been? And to kind of just really explain just how how big of a of an issue this actually is. This is not just one industry, right? This is this is no. across many different industries. Correct. Because. Yeah. The consulting houses basically affect everything and everybody in the United States. They, that is what they do. They, they give direction that most corporations will look at and, and follow and agree with. So, um, uh, at the end of the day, um, I'll agree with everything you had to say, except for corruption. I, I have not really, I've never really seen or been a part of anything that was truly corrupt. I've mm. seen a couple of guys stealing, um, you know, a couple of spark plugs or something. But at the end of the day, when I was at Ford, I didn't really see corruption. And if somebody did something illegal, they were out in a heartbeat. And I mean that sincerely. That's reassuring. Yeah. yeah. So I don't, I don't know about the illegal stuff, but everything else, yes, it is old and it is slow and it's, it's hugely tedious to try and get things to go through. Everybody is always afraid. Fear is the biggest thing that uh, Dr. Demi used to say, that fear was the, the biggest problem associated with uh, the engineers or anybody that was in uh, corporate staff. Fear is everywhere. It, um, I mean, you know, I, I can't afford to get fired or whatever. You've got uh, golden handcuffs and shackles at the same time. You, you can't afford to lose your job because you bought the house that you really didn't need, but you wanted to impress everybody. You, you, you want to take the vacations that only a millionaire would normally take, but you're going to take them so that, you know, and then you look in your bank account and uh, it's not so good. Well, I've got to get that promotion. How am I going to get promoted? How do I get promoted? How do I get promoted? Crap. I mean, that's uh, when you're, when you're thinking like that, you're not thinking. Um, the me, 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 me. In fact, they, didn't they call it the me generation? Um, uh, when you've got a me generation that, uh, that would rather have puppies than kids, when you've got a me generation that basically only looks at, well, how is this going to get me ahead? Not looking at the corporation, not looking at actually everyone uh, whose uh, who's, uh, salary has a fiduciary duty. And if you don't follow those fiduciary duties, you, you wind up in situations but it's easy to fall into the trap. It's super easy to just say no. And that's how you get promoted. Just say no. Because if you don't take a chance, if you never take a chance, you'll never make a mistake. And if you never make a mistake, you can move ahead. Except at Elon's house. If you don't, if you're not, uh, if you're not making chips, that means you're not whittling. And to me, and that's what we do at Monroe. Monroe is run very similar to what I believe Tesla is run. I don't need people to sit around all day and, um, and look at their cell phones. I don't need um, people who, uh, who need to have a, a three-day week <laughs> I mean, uh, and work from home continuously. We don't have that shit here. It just doesn't work, and that's why we're still alive. I mean, everybody else has gone bankrupt except for Ford. 
everybody else in the auto industry is going bankrupt. We didn't, and neither at Ford and didn't either. But at the end of the day, that's that's yeah. it. I mean, that's what it boils right down to. If you're yeah. if you're if you're going to listen to what's trendy, I think uh, Thomas Jecker, Jefferson said in in acts of fashion go with the flow, and um, and in acts of morality stand like a rock. We don't stand for nothing. I mean. Oh, Gypsy, you better not say that. Why? Well, it's slanderous. What does it mean? Well, I'm not really sure. And by the way, this is the real comment. And I've got Eric right here to, to verify it. That's what I heard yesterday. Well, I, well, I don't know, but it's slanderous. It's terrible. No, it's not. It's short for Egyptian. I don't get it. I don't understand what you're talking about, but okay, yeah. fine. But that's it. Everybody gets plastered with this crap that means nothing. And they, they believe that to be the holiest of ho I mean, really? Are you, are you kidding me? We're, yeah. we're a totally screwed up uh, nation right now. We got, yeah. we got the wrong people telling us what to do. Right I think from the I, top of the house all the way down to, all the way down to, don't talk about gypsies. Oh my gosh. And <laughs> Oriental. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Northwest Orient used to be an airline. Anyhow. Uh, I yeah. Don't, I think I think the resurgence of a culture of hard work and meritocracy. I think that is that is the thing that really yeah. resonates with me. This sort of at this time because I had I have experienced what that actually feels like and looks like. We see the results of that type of culture in companies like SpaceX, in companies like Tesla, Neuralink, in companies like Palantir, uh, you know, uh, Paul Palm, Andrews, Andrews, yeah. right? There's all these examples of companies in the United States yeah. that uh, you know, Coinbase, Spotify. These are like they're, they're examples of companies that espouse this sort of meritocracy and just uh, uh, focusing on a culture of results and hard work, and they are winning so hard. They're winning so hard in comparison to their to everyone else that it's impossible to ignore. And like the, I think the perfect encapsulation of this is the whole thing that happened with the Boeing Starliner that got you know that stranded those astronauts up there. Uh, yeah. To me, Boeing is like a is like an encapsulation of the old legacy systems of the United States. It's like a perfect encapsulation of like this is what the United States usually is. And this is how it functions. They get paid twice the amount. They do a shitty job and they have, need someone else to come rescue them. And then the new player that's actually working on meritocracy and working hard and they have the right culture and no, no bullshit attitude, they do it for half the price. They send 13 different missions up there and they end up saving Boeing's ass. Oh, and by the way, they're way cheaper than the other guy, right? That, that to me is like a perfect encapsulation of what has been happening. So like my hope is that th that... Those SpaceX, Teslas, Andorils, Palantirs, newer links of the world become the norm. They become the norm of culture, the norm of the the norm of the public to say that's what I that's what I want my companies to be, and that's how I'm gonna carry myself to ensure that the country is successful. Because I know my my work directly impacts the country's long term success. I don't know how we do that though. That that's where I become depressed. <laughs> well, it's like how do we do that? Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, I immigrated. Uh, I wasn't born here, but I wanted to be here. A meritocracy yeah. is the reason that I'm here. I don't screw around. I, I truly believe that, uh, that why did, why did Boeing go that way? Cause I was working with them on the 787 and you know what it was, they were a little slower. I mean, I, I will tell you they had, they had, uh, tons of latte bars and shit like that. Um, on every floor you had to have Oh, I have to have my latte sprinkles and blah, blah. Okay, so fine. Uh, but when they got into the workshops and whatnot, when we were doing the 787, they, they, they pulled their weight. They did a good job. They did a really good job. But what happened? Well, all the guys that were running um, Boeing uh, wound up not getting the job that they thought they were going to get. And the jobs that they gave out had more to do with, oh, um, He's socially acceptable. What does that mean? Right color. It's not a guy. It's a woman. Uh, I like the meritocracy because no matter what you are, if you're good at whatever you do, you get a promotion. You look around here, it's like the United Nations. Why? Because, not because I, oh, I want to have more people from wherever. That has nothing to do with it. Zero to do with it. 
these guys are perfect. These people that I have here, they work hard and they come from different places. I don't care. They're different colors. Who gives a shit? Yeah. I came from Canada. We didn't have a civil war and we don't, there was none of that. Anyhow, at the end of the day, what happened to Boeing? What happened? Well, they changed their direction. And why? Because they had consultants. And the consultants were giving you the fashionable way to do things. The fashionable. Does anybody look backwards? Thomas Jefferson didn't look backwards. He stood like a rock on his positions because they were morally correct. So you can say that all the things that they did at Boeing are morally correct, but they're not. When you start hiring board members that are movie stars or tap dancers or uh, people that like sports heroes, and what, what, what are you doing? What yeah. are you doing? Why aren't you hiring people who are industry leaders? Why aren't you, why aren't you, why aren't you focused on, on the quality of the product? I mean, for God's sake. And, and then some of them, I guess, must have been financial because right now, I don't know if you've heard, but you do know that uh, the Boeing labor force wants a 35% increase in wages. No way. 35%? Are you out of my, I mean, have wow. they been held back <laughs> for a long time? What causes that? I'd like to know more about how that, because really and truly, the price of the aluminum is dirt in comparison to labor. Labor is huge on aircraft, huge. It's, it's the most expensive part. And now you're going to jack the price of that up by 35%? Yeah. Holy mackerel. Yeah. Boeing has got a problem because they had the wrong board. Hey, you know what? We got in to get in some happy talk here. Cripes. Let's yeah. talk about where's that Tesla thing, man? <laughs> yeah, I, let's talk about yeah, We might have to break I, this into the, the two different podcasts. I love it. You know, I, I'll leave I'll leave it with this point. I, I read on X uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, somebody said, America, are you familiar with the innovator's dilemma? Sandy, I'm, I'm assuming you are. It's sitting dilemma. in my, it's right yeah. back at me, yeah. The, the somebody said, America is experiencing the innovator's dilemma. And that resonated with me so deeply because I'm like, wow. You mean the whole country? The whole usually, country. Usually it's focused on one person, one, business. one idea, business yeah. maybe. Uh, but yeah, if we've got something like to be, I keep hearing a lot of uh, stuff from one side about how we've got to help people and the, the people, <laughs> rural, <laughs> rural America can't find a kinko so they they can't uh, they can't prove that they're americans yeah. i find that hard to believe because as far as i know um i don't know of any rural area like that we that sounds more like a deep dark africa someplace um uh, where uh, you know where they're still spearing things for dinner i i don't know where that is in america but i, agree. I find it hard to believe so if we start if we if we're doing nothing but you know, um, letting everybody in and giving everybody hundreds of thousands of dollars because, you know, they don't have anything. Uh, it, it's kind of a good idea to uh, really rethink that, uh, really rethink that, that, that thought. That's, yeah. you can't win if you've got more people on welfare than there is working. Sooner or later, people will pack up and move away. And that's what happened to Europe. More people were, the rich were really, really rich, hugely rich. And the poor said, you know what? I've had enough of this shit. I can work for a living. I got trades. They got on a boat and they came to the United States. Why? Merito uh, meritocracy. Meritocracy. Yeah. That's why. They wanted to be, they wanted to get, they wanted to be fulfilled. And now we've got the same sort of baloney, only it's the other end of the direction. Rich people are horrible. We have to tax the rich. Why? Because they made money, because uh, because they invented a lot of stuff, because they made rocket ships and cars and robots and on and on. Oh, yeah, that's right. They're, he's not giving enough. I bet you he pays more than everybody else put together. I could I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that that Elon is taxed pretty heavily. And yeah, um, yeah. I, I just I don't I don't get it. In China, yeah. here's something else from a cultural standpoint. Everybody wants to be a millionaire in China. Everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. They'll, they'll take a job for a little while, but sooner or later, they're going to want to get out and get their own stuff and 
and invent something and make it happen. There's no, there's no innovator's dilemma or inventor's dilemma in China. Yeah. None. None. They have been taught from grade school, and I mean that sincerely, from grade school how to, um, how to, um, how to be inventive and creative and do whatever they do. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Happy talk. Should we do some happy talk? Yeah. Okay. Happy <laughs> talk it is. Let's do right. it. Happy talk. Let's go. Okay. So I think what we're going to do is I think, I think this first half, we're going to make it its own piece. And the second half, we're going to make it its own piece because that, that it was such a good discussion. My God, it deserves its own spotlight. Um, how, wait, when is your cutoff here? How, how much, how long do we have you for? Well, actually, I was supposed to do something, uh, but it got canceled. So okay, okay, so we won't I keep you for know. too too long. Yeah, hang on a second, Eric. Do you know what uh, the next thing I've got is, and what time it is? Yeah, my secretary is off. She's got issues, okay. health issues. Now, Eric is your secretary for today. Eric good is luck. no man's secretary. <laughs> you are you are good until about three. We got okay, plenty, of plenty of time. Ahead. Okay, no problem. Yeah. We won't. We won't. I. We will be respectful of your time, obviously. But yeah, if yeah. at any point we, we're getting too long winded, just let me know. Um. Okay. So Tesla's robo taxi event. You went there. We saw your yeah. video. We saw your Q and A. Um. The big topic of discussion that we've been throwing back and forth is uh. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of stuff to go through. But the thing that we've been getting stuck on, and this was kind of mentioned on the quarterly earnings report yesterday which i don't know did you take a chance to listen to tesla's earnings report we no, might pull it up I've later heard, yeah, yeah well i've heard i've heard some stuff um yeah first off they the uh tesla beat the uh, the market forecast and who is that oh yeah more consultants um yeah. when i went there and i looked at everything that was going on i uh, i can't buy tesla stock because oh you talk positive about them I, that means you can't buy it, but <laughs> I can throw them under the bus and sell them short. Is that correct? Yes, mm -hmm. that's perfectly acceptable. Don't you understand? <laughs> nope, I don't. But there you go. But if it would have been up to me and I told everybody that I could possibly talk to, buy Tesla stock, it's going to go to the moon as soon as they go to the, and it did. So it went up 40 bucks or something. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. It just pisses me off because- yeah. Yeah, it's like they're insane. talking out of two sides of their mouth, basically, when they when they say shit like that. I yeah. think, I think that the thing that we're trying to figure out, and um, a little bit of a clue was given on the earnings call, but I'd love to hear your thoughts here, and then maybe we can listen to the to the thing together. Is we're trying to figure out if the this this cheaper car that they've got it towards the model two. The Model 2, yeah. that they're That's what it is. Okay. I mean, I That's spotted I that in a okay. second. Are okay. you shitting me? Okay. This is not, this is, this is what happens when you are a financial analyst or a deep thinking journalist. You can't see shit. I walked <laughs> there. I saw the door open. I said, and Eric was right there. I said, there's the Model 2. They just don't have a steering wheel or a brake or whatever. Mm. You know how easy it is to put that crap back in? It's, it's a piece of cake. But why would I even want it? If, if it's a Model 2 and it's thirty under 30 grand, I want the thing to do what I want it to do. Most people don't need a, a, a they're not, if you want to, if you want to go camping, go and get an F-250 and pull your trailer wherever you want to. I don't give a damn. But if you're living in the city, you don't need an F-250. And you just don't. You're no. not going to, you're, you're not going to impress me by trying to find a parking spot that's made for you know, maybe uh, 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 like the little dinky, uh, uh, what do you call them? Compact vehicle. And yeah. well, I can't find a parking spot, so I'll just park on the sidewalk. That doesn't make me excited or happy or anything else like that. But that vehicle, uh, that, that, that Model 2, oh my God. And that's what I'm calling it. I stopped talking about uh, RoboTaxi. It's the Model 2. Yeah. And, um, and that was genius on that. That's a little trick. I love the way that every once in a while, Elon will, uh, will, will fool these clowns. And so, oh, this is a robo-taxi. This is robo-taxi. Yeah, okay, it's a robo-taxi. Yeah, it's a robo-taxi, all right. And, um, well, it's just not meeting my expectations. Where's the small car? Blah, blah. It's right in front of you, moron. In <laughs> front of you. And that's what I like about Elon. 
he doesn't he doesn't have to hit you on the head with a brick, but he loves to hit you on the head with a brick after everybody figures it out. It was right in front of you, hiding in plain sight. But not me. I took one look and that's exactly what I thought it was. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think the the clue that that has that that sort of gave it away for me is if it, if you know, in the call they also said that they're trying to get this thing to a uh, 2 million unit run rate sometime in the next couple of years. And I'm like, yeah. okay, per year, right? To 2 to 4 is is their goal. And I'm like, okay. So, what is the likelihood that there's if this thing was fully self-driving and didn't have a steering wheel pedal, let's just assume that's the case. What's the likelihood they're going to be able to sell all those units into jurisdictions that allow self-driving by 2026 on 2027? To me, that the chance there is zero percent. The 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 speed at which jurisdictions will approve self-driving technology is going to be way slower than Tesla's ability to crank out these fully self-driving units, and that's their innovation, right? So, in in a way to get these these production lines to be able to not just you know produce all these cars or sit idle and not be able to sell the cars slap a steering wheel and pedal in there and sell them and then when you're ready to sell them without the steering wheel and pedal yank it is that is that too simplistic like am i am i an no. idiot for thinking that okay no because I, I used to design a lot of stuff and and quite frankly i would design it for three innovations uh to crush a competitor so the first innovation would be uh, a customer a customer shows me. So one of them was in a, uh, an emergency exit device from, uh, I, I'll use the pump instead. So we, we were working on a pump and this pump, um, it, it really was uh, old fashioned and whatnot. We redesigned it. We thinned out some of the walls and uh, like cast walls and stuff like that. Did casting changes, found new suppliers and whatnot, brought the price down because the labor went down and the, and the material costs went down. While we were doing it, we had a couple of other innovative ideas that, uh, that would make that pump quite a bit better. Um, so I'm not going to go into it, but one of them had to do with the electric motor and any other one had to do with um, how we were going to control that pump. So uh, the big boss said, hey, we'll put them all out at the same time. I said, ah, no, Let, that's not what we're going to do. We're going to put out the first one first. And here we go. It doesn't it doesn't cost very much. Um, thinning the walls out was a big nothing, um, and uh, and the casting company was happy to do it because basically it made their life a whole lot easier. The flowing was better. We used CF, uh, a computer program to uh, show how the material would flow inside the. This was sand casting, and it, it was everything was easy peasy. And then the machining, yeah, well, they had to buy a new machine because the old machine was crap and. Uh, it, uh, so anyways, they bought a new machine for machining it thing went out, sold like hotcakes. And, um, uh, and then 18 months later, uh, we put out the new one with the new electric motor. You couldn't see the difference. Okay. You couldn't see it. You could, if you bought the thing, there was a slight, uh, cost reduction and, uh, and people bought them and Hey, this works 10 times better. Scrapped the old pumps, bought the new ones. 18 months later, and by the way, the uh, competition figured out about the casting uh, sizes and stuff like that. What did they do? They changed everything they had. Now, I should tell you, we, we did do one thing that was different. Instead of using um, high production rate tooling, uh, we, we used tooling that would be useless in 18 months. You'd have to throw it away. Mm. Did the competition do that? Nope. Once they figured it out, they bought tooling that was going to last them for 30 years, which is a whole lot more expensive. Then the second one come out and it looked the same. What the hell did they do? So they bought the pumps, they tore it apart. They saw the motor was different. Oh my God, we got to do that too. So they scrapped all the stuff that they had, modified all those tools, put in that new motor and, uh, and then tried to compete, but they couldn't because their overhead costs were more. And then the third one came out, and that one was the killer design. So in basically three years, we mopped the floor with the competition. That is kind of like what Elon Musk's team has probably done as well. Hey, let's design the Model 2. Okay, we got steering wheel, we've got pedals, we got this, we got that. Yeah, but let's call it the robo-taxi. Okay, yank that out. 
what, what did I lose? Nothing. It already had all the software built into it. It already has all the controllers built into it. It doesn't need to have pedals. It doesn't need to have a steering wheel. No problem. Take it out. I got two designs now. I got one that's got a steering wheel and a pedal and all that other crapola, which is basically redundant. And then I got another one that's, uh, that, uh, that, that uh, um, in essence, is ready to go right now. And it's a lot more dramatic and on and on and on. So if you, I mean, I don't understand. For me, everything that Elon does is 100% logical. Everything he does, it's cleverer than what I would come up with because I wouldn't think of, you know, calling it a robo taxi. Um, <laughs> I would have called it a Model 2 without a steering wheel. But, but at the end of the day, Elon, I think inside he enjoys watching morons. I believe that he really, I mean, it's like you go to the circus and you watch the clowns and you, and you're happy, right? So the same thing is true with when he, when he goes in with these financial analysts and, uh, and the, uh, you know, financial analysts and, and, and writers, he just loves jerking her chain and he does it so well. It's just, it's, he's a master. I mean, yesterday, again, argument time. Um, you know, well, Elon Musk isn't uh, isn't the kind of person you think he is. I said, really? And who else has uh, got a rocket ship that uh, that you know will land all by itself? Think NASA did? No, I don't think so. NASA wouldn't even go to stainless steel, which what, that's what we wanted them to do. They wouldn't they wouldn't go to stainless steel. They couldn't. They they are publicly said it'll never happen that a rocket can land that way. That's only in movies, and yet we were talking to people about it. That thing that he's the uh, the the heavy uh, the heavy lift. Worship. I mean, yeah. holy shit! We had n no one has ever come up with anything like that. How many stories is that thing? Eighteen stories tall, 20? or some yeah. twenty stories? Are you kidding me? 300, 300 tons or 3,000 uh, 3, tons or something? Ridiculous numbers! And there it is, Nyeh. clunk. Okay, who's done that before? Nobody. Who started a car company all by himself? Nobody. Not, not since the twenties. I mean, who who out there has done? Uh, who who did Starlink? Oh well, yeah, but that's at the end of the day, the press is so powerful, so incredibly powerful. It's just like I hate to use the term, but when the Nazis did did what they did, what did they do? They controlled communication. They gave people, uh, you, you may not know this, but TVs were very popular in Germany prior to World War II, and we didn't have them here at all. They were invented here, but they used them over there. Radios were given out to anybody who couldn't get a TV signal. And what did they put out? Their message. They put out the government message. Now we've got, we've got a, a message that comes from you know, our TV or I don't watch TV, but anyways, from the box and, uh, and people listen and they, and they believe everything they hear and they go down a primrose, primrose path, just like the German people did prior to World War II. I mean, and it's not a new concept. Uh, Caesar, uh, one of the Caesars, I can't remember which one. He said, um, if I can control the circus, I can control the people. Now circus, that means both, you know, the place where they used to eat Christians and, um, and the post, that's where we get post from. They used yeah. to have a post and it was in the middle of different squares and whatnot. And all the news that you were needing was going to be put on there. And where did it come from? It came from the government and people read it and believed it. Yeah. Until scary. Yeah. Scary levels of similarities between that time and, and this one in, in some places for sure. It's, it hasn't, it yeah. hasn't changed. It's always been yeah. the same thing. If you can control yeah. the media, you control yeah. everything. Yeah. So true. Go ahead, Hans. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I love your your comment about the motor and how you rolled it out in steps. And yeah. thinking about that, I'd love to dig into the these next uh, more affordable vehicles that Elon has talked about. That's going to be coming out in the first half of next year. And it's before you know he's been very clear publicly that they're not going to do the unboxed process with those models yet that the unbox process is reserved for the cyber cab specifically and anything else that comes out beyond that time. So, you know, whatever these next 
uh, more affordable vehicles are going to be that they roll out next year are going to be manufactured on the current existing lines. And they said specifically that they're going to be using portions of the new vehicle platforms, but then also portions of the existing platforms. Mm -hmm. And so it's not going to be uh, necessarily as cheap to manufacture. But, you know, to I think both of your points earlier, it's got to be a good stepping stone from a supply chain standpoint to help ramp up all of the components for, you know, if you want to start producing, you know, I would say at least probably a, a million units a year run rate out of Giga Austin of CyberCab by the end of 2026 or beginning of 2027. Um, you've got to start working on ramping some of those supply chains before that and assume that that would be with this, you know, these next generation vehicles. So I'm curious from <clears throat> your perspective, you know, if, if you were sitting in Lars's shoes and Elon said, hey, you know, we're, we're going to hit the ground running with an unbox process in 2026, but we need to make something on our existing lines in 2025 that helps us do that in between step between here and there. What components of the, the next generation platforms are you incorporating into those vehicles? And and if you've got to make them cheaper, you know, do you make it look like a cyber cab or, mm. you know, do you expect those really to be that model two that you're talking about? Or are those going to be something a little bit different? Okay. So, um, uh, the, the product that I saw, uh, when I was there, I, I knocked around on it and I mentioned that this is made out of carbon fiber. You can tell by the ring and, um, and one of the guys kind of just shrugged and said, yeah, now. If you talk about unboxed, um, unboxed is a, um, I don't know how to do that. And I've been in business for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. And based on what I saw with those, uh, basically black and white slides that he put up, I don't, I don't see that as being, um, anything that's going to give me any advantage except for maybe a paint department. But if I go to carbon fiber, I can mold in color done. I don't need to have a paint department. Um, and if I'm going to try and get rid of attaching points and stuff like that, because unboxed, I don't even know how to uh, glue that thing together. And I'm sure it will be glued, but uh, I, I don't know how to do that on a, on a basis that might get me to higher than 150, 200,000 a year. I don't know how to do that. Uh, maybe there's some trick that they've got, but I know a lot of tricks and, I don't know how to do that. However, if I use sheet molded compound, um, which is a big flat piece of carbon fiber that um, is semi-flexible um, under normal circumstances, and it rolls underneath a big press, the press comes down, squash, clip, and goes back up. I got my body done. One part. One part. Uh that is a big deal as far as I'm concerned. Um, if, uh, if I was going to guess at what they're going to try and do first, it won't be something that they actually buy from somebody else. The first thing that I would do if it was up to me and I was Lars, um, I would probably focus my attentions on those things that I can control 100% and body is one of them. Um, and it's not a secret, and I've talked about this at engineering conferences in the past, about going to a, um, uh, a composite body and cutting down the number of pieces significantly using tooling that's quite a bit cheaper than... So if, you, if you're stamping a body, you're looking at thousands of dies, thousands. Some of them are huge, but there's thousands of little ones and big ones and all kinds of ones. And because... You can't, you have to go down the line, okay? So this one is a blanking tool. That's, that's a big press. The next one might be a trim phase. The next one might be form one, form two, form three. People try and stay away from a fourth form, but sometimes when you've got to go around, you've got to have kick, uh, uh, you've, got to, you've got to kick in a radius or something like that. That'll get you to uh, the fourth stage. So that's six big uh, dies that you have to buy for production. But you also have one sitting right next to the line in case that die breaks. And then you have another one that's being repaired. You have three sets of dies. So 
You go from that and then you say, okay, we're going to make this out of carbon fiber sheet molded compound. One, done. Um, and it doesn't wear out uh, because uh, until it heats, uh, until you heat the, uh, uh, the material, it's, uh, it's a little bit flexible. So once it's heated, it turns into a stone. Well, what does that do? Well, it gives me no variation. Everyone is going to be exactly the same, perfect every time. And that's what we found on the BMW i3. Now that is a process. They also use carbon fiber. That's not the process I'd use because it, it's, too, it's too intensive. There's too many stops, too many stations, too many little bits and pieces. But if you look at the Aptera uh, vehicle, the three-wheeled vehicle, that vehicle is 100% from the body standpoint, carbon fiber. Oh my God, the expense of blah, blah. No, no, you're not looking at total accounted cost. And if you don't look at total accounted cost and everything, well, look at the price of that material. And, and, and I, can, I, can get, uh, I can get steel for a dime or 20 cents or whatever a pound. Okay, what about the rest of the scrap? Because it's 40% scrap. When you're, when you're on a stamping line, 40% goes into the trash bin. You can't reuse it. Okay, what happens when you use um, injection molding or sheet molded compound? Well, some of that stuff is very viable and very usable. I don't have as much scrap. Same thing as castings. People just don't quite get it. And scrap costs a lot of money. Even though you might get something back for it, I still got to clean out that tray in the bottom. I still got automation that pulls that scrap out. <clears throat> I still got people endangering their hands, their lives in some cases, taking that shit and putting it into a great big giant tub so that it can be taken away. On and on and on and on. These are... Oh, well, that's called the hidden factory. No, it's not. It's right there in front of your face. <laughs> it's not the hidden factory. The hidden factory um, is a misnomer that was invented by somebody, but not me. Um, at the end of the day, when you start looking at total accounted costs, how much labor is there? Well, virtually none. How much, uh, how much scrap is there? Well, virtually none. Well, uh, what about quality? Well, it's perfect every time. And it makes it so that because the body is basically your fixture, everything else will hang off of it. It'll be easy to put together every time. There's no rework. Well, what are you going to do uh, with your uh, rework lines? How about not buying them? You don't need to. So at the end of the day, making things in one giant part has been proven to be a good idea. And all you have to do is look at the Boeing 787. It's got a lot of huge parts. And what are they made out of carbon fiber? That's not the carbon fiber you put in airplanes. Uh, sorry, airplane carbon fiber is not what you put into cars because that shit is expensive and it always will be. But the stuff that goes into a car doesn't have to. Now, the next step or phase or whatever, you know what? When you go to complete self-driving, do I really need an airbag? Do I really need to have crash bars? Do I really need to have all the protective devices that are stuck inside a vehicle that make it a lot heavier? No, you don't. And they become redundant. Now, I mean, uh, we still have things stuck in cars right now that we've known forever don't need to be there, like wing mirrors. Why are they there? I have cameras. Because there's old people that just can't see the future. But I'm the wing mirror guy. I mean, wing mirror, it sounds so, I don't know, aircraftish. <laughs> so at the end of the day, I, I think that what Elon's going to do is he's going to roll out a product and maybe it'll have a steering wheel and whatnot. But I, yeah, I, re I really and truly believe that he'll change his mind and he'll put out the Model 2 with a steering wheel and that'll be it. And it'll be plain Jane and... That'll be it. Now, if he does use other componentry or whatever, all you have to do is um, <clears throat> his headliners are really expensive. Actually, the inside of the Tesla uh, Model 3 and Model Y are much higher cost and quality than what you need for a car like that. So I'll just change the material. The material is like 90. I can use the same dyes. I can use the same molds. I can use the same everything. 
I just I just put a cheaper material in it. And that's what happens when you sit inside the Model 2 or the Cyber Cab, whatever you want to call it. And, yeah, you feel it and you go, this don't feel like a Tesla. This feels like a cab. And quite frankly, that's what taxis, uh, they, they do have a, a different kind of material because people... Yeah. Don't they abuse them? And um, and you got to have stuff that you can wash puke out in a hurry and things like that. So uh, yeah. I believe I believe that um, Elon will do the same thing as he always does. He's going to put stuff out and well, wait a minute, he told us, and you like a fool believed it, and that's <laughs> it's kind of like what it. That's the way it works. So so on the on the point of so I I. I'm with you that I think like like what I'm trying to figure out is the the logistics behind manufacturing this model too. And so if and and so with the existing lines that they have now for the model 3 and Y, how how is it possible to convert those lines to uh to manufacture or put together that type of form factor that's significantly smaller than the 3 and Y? Like how or would it require them shutting down uh, one of the lines and then just repurposing that line and making that line start manufacturing the Model 2. Help me understand that a little bit better. Okay, so on every vehicle, you've got four pickup points. Um, sometimes they're bow ties. Sometimes they're pins with a, with a diamond pin and round pins. A lot of different ways to pick up a vehicle. Um, when I design a car, <clears throat> I make sure that those pickup points are exactly the same. The things that change when you uh, put on put the put the frame or whatever it, whatever component it is that you're trying to build. So let's say it's the rolling chassis and and I'm gonna I'm gonna put a body on top of it. Well, the rolling chassis will have those pickup points, and when I drop a body on it, the body don't care. The body is going to be picked up by whatever the rolling chassis looks like. The frame parts or something is going to spear into that and it's done so at the end of the day in the olden days yes that was a big problem you'd you'd have you know a big car that would go down a line and then a small car couldn't possibly do it but toyota showed the way on that and they they use bow ties and uh, any kind of vehicle can go down you can have a noah the biggest thing that they make and then the next thing comes down is a uh, is a Corolla or something. They, you, you can build anything you want uh, and it doesn't have to be, it, it doesn't have to be 10 of those and three of those or what could be anything you want, anytime you want. So that part is easy peasy. Now logistics to the line um, at the beginning uh, before there's a car, uh, there's a, a work process sheet and uh, that work process sheet basically tells you what's going to be built when and, um, and what components are needed. So as long as you have um, your line side uh, component tree uh, staged properly, and uh, I mean, th it used to be a big deal. Now it's like, like rolling off a log. Then I can pick up, um, I could pick up a, a Model Y uh, that's going to have luxury interior. It goes down and it gets luxury seats and whatnot. But the next set of seats that, the operator is going to see are the model two seats and they're cheap and, um, but rugged. Okay. And so those seats go, it, it's really, it's not, it's not that hard to make that work. And we've been doing it now for quite some time. And I'm sure that, and then actually Tesla's also got AGVs, automatic guided vehicles. They got a ton of those as well. Um, and those are also easy peasy. And what you can do there is, if the uh, so let's say you've got an empty AGV, it rolls by the um, uh, there's uh, scanning stations that want it. It's scanned. It knows what it is and it knows what's going to happen next. So uh, there's a little uh, uh, electric little electric motors or what have you, and it's just going to move the pickup points to a new spot. Done. Ready to now work on uh, a two seater. Uh, like uh, the Model Two, I should say, or um, a Cybertruck. I don't care. It's I, I don't care. I can make it work on anything. So that part's really easy. It's just a matter of making sure that um, your staging is proper. That's all. Got it. Um, 
Is it also safe to assume that this, uh, this, let's uh, again assume that the cheaper vehicle is this Model 2, which is a Sagar cab with steering wheel and pedals, let's say. Is it safe to assume that this new car will be a steer by wire so that it's much easier to put in the steering wheel and pedal or, or like the steering wheel and drive by wire is already in the pedals, right? So it's like that's already a technology. So is it safe yeah. to assume it's going to be steer by wire? It would have to be. It would be too expensive yeah. to put a. Ha a so you want to get rid of the intermediate shaft anyways, because all that is a big sphere to shish bogging the, uh, the driver. I, 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 they should have been gone a long, long time ago. So that'll be gone for sure. I mean, uh, and, and if I've already got steer by wire and that's what it has to be right now, uh, I can put a steering wheel on there no time. And, yeah. and quite frankly, I, I have a cyber truck. I drive it all the time. And and guess what? I have had no problems with steer by wire. So yeah. there you go. And I I've been wonder, in lots of airplane that they don't have a problem either. But there's I a almost, guy, there's a guy in Nishta. Steer by wire. <laughs> Let's get back to a tiller. Okay. Yeah, direct uh, direct drive to the wheels. Yeah. yeah. I almost wonder if the the decision behind having Cybertruck with steer by wire was born out of their need to have a that cheaper vehicle capable of removing and adding the the steering wheel i wonder if that was the genesis of that idea you know just the kind of like know. yeah but i i know that um uh i've been I've, I've been pounding the table on this for 30 years i mean yeah. after you work on aircraft and you see how much better it is and how much safer it is and how much lighter it is on and on and on why are we doing this other stuff what is the rationale what is the reason because people are afraid. And remember, I talked about this a while ago. How do you get promoted in the big organization? Say yeah. no. As long as you say no, you're going to the top. Yeah, yeah. Um, Hans, I know you have a, a list of questions. Did you, would you want to hit next? Because I have questions about the bot, if Sandy's got time. Yeah, yeah definitely want to hit bot questions. I just, this is a real fast question and kind of an aside, but something that keeps nagging at me what's the purpose of the two different size tires on the cyber cab the front ones are little the rear ones are big that doesn't seem like it from a common sense perspective to make a whole lot of sense to me um unless there's some aerodynamic efficiencies that you get there i, I haven't been able to figure that one out um ride dynamics is not my forte and uh, i can tell but i can tell you that when we've done other vehicles, uh, we've made uh, the front wheels wider or narrower than the rear wheels for a lot of different reasons, for different situations and scenarios. It could very well be that we're looking, and Tesla is like the back end. So there may be something to do with the vehicle dynamic that, uh, that would make it more um, appealing to have a big wheel in the rear. At the end of the day, <clears throat> that's not my my field and I'll talk all day long on those things that I know a lot about that one, uh, not me. So I, I can't, uh, I can speculate, but I don't like doing that. I, I'd rather just talk about what I know. Yeah. yeah. Um, actually on the, I had another question on the, on the robo taxi cyber cab model two, whatever the hell we want to call it. The way the doors, the, yeah. the, the doors that go out, do you think that's going to be a model? Like if, if they use the same platform, do you think that's going to be model two as well? You think they'll change that? For nope. that, it won't change. And Simply. by the way, I said it on the video. This is a ripped off of Aptera. That car looks so much like an Aptera. It ain't even funny. A four wheel Aptera. And the doors, I love the doors on the Aptera because when, I mean, it's so easy to get in and out. And, and nowadays, you know, um, I, I know how to make that so it won't fall apart. And the best way is it's got a frame. I can, I, I, I don't have to worry about, like on that, if you're looking at a unibody and somebody shows me that kind of a design, no, eh, not, a, not in a million years. You are never going to suck me into that one because I know what's going to happen. Those doors are going to sag and fall to pieces. But if I have, if I have a fairly rugged steel construction in the front of the vehicle, and you're going to have to do that anyway, and for side impact and whatnot, and I have a frame to attach it to, and I have carbon fiber doors. Are you kidding me? This is a no-brainer. 
No, I can I can have all the styling, all the grace and glamour that I want to. There's no reason why I can't have it that way. Right. If I move from that to steel or aluminum, not so much. But uh, but uh, but if they stay with carbon fiber, uh, there's no reason to move away from the single hinge point. And by the way, if I got carbon fiber, I can always tell where the aperture, the opening is going to be. Yeah. So no big deal. It'll be easy. Interesting. Um, one of the things Hans and I were talking about on the on the actual like the castings <laughs> for this uh, this model two was it seems like they would be able to use the one of the Cybertruck. Uh, casting machines to just do one one movement and create all the castings they need for this vehicle in one in one press is that a fa is or hans maybe you you explain it because you're the engineer i don't even know if i said that right you say it yeah, yeah I, I mean that was close mean. yeah i uh you know that uh, cherry already has that right and it's like a it's a mid-sized car a c-section c c-section a c-sized vehicle so um the the uh, the casting that they have is made by Idra's parents company in um, uh, in China, and it's fifteen thousand tons. The biggest machine that Tesla has is nine thousand tons. So at the end of the day, um, that that's already a possibility. And by the way, the production machine is going to be sixteen thousand tons. That's a I don't know how big that is, but I'm sure that it would be bigger than my house, literally. And that's a fact. But not as big as for Saw's house. Saw's got a huge place. Right? <laughs> but anyway, um, but, but at the end of the day, that's, that's already there. They could do that if they want to. It would depend a lot on everything that's going on right there. Um, you always make these decisions. There's trade-offs. When you do a car, there's trade-offs all over the place. And it would, do we have to have more investment? How long is this going to be? Should we go with uh, low pressure sand castings? I mean, there's a whole bunch of things that you take into account to figure out which way you want to go with a car like that. Because it's only, it's only a two seater and it's probably going to be a city car. So Yeah. And then as far as the numbers go, I don't know, it's going to be impossible to be accurate on this without a full teardown and all that good stuff. The, the numbers that I've heard, you know, and, you know, we've discussed previously, Manufacturing costs of somewhere around twenty to twenty five thousand for this vehicle. Do you manufacturing first, cost? No, that's wrong. Less? Be, really? Okay. I would say probably around um for what I saw and I don't I can't see what they're using for suspensions and things like that. I don't know what the size of the battery is, on and on. But uh for me I would say that'd be about um sixteen, seventeen thousand, um maybe uh, maybe they give an up level thing and they'll add, I don't know, Nicer maybe seats or something. Yeah. No, there won't be any extra seats in it. That's, and that's where you're losing money. I mean, rear seats are gone. Uh, steering wheels are gone. I'm on and on and on. You, you can drop a lot of money and getting rid of two doors. That's a big deal too. So I'd say 16 or $18,000 from a cost standpoint. That's, that's without, that's that's manufacturing costs. There's other things that go into it. Uh, somewhere along the line, you got to get rid of, uh, or you got to take into account um, ED and D and things like that. So it's uh, that's uh, um, that's kind of it's a little bit up in the air. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go ahead, Hans. Last uh, question from me on the on the cyber cab point is one of the nuggets that Elon dropped on the earnings call was that they're aiming for a half order of magnitude reduction in cycle time for the unboxed process specifically. So, and he said that was compared to a traditional <laughs> manufacturing line. Unibody. I'm assuming he yeah. he meant something like uh, you know, a GM or Ford or one of those. So, what are you thinking that looks like? Is that, you know, a, a 60 second cycle time normally divided by 5 or 6 down to 10 or 12 seconds per vehicle or what does that sound like to you? Done. It's easy. I mean, it's, it's easy. Um, if it, when you take into account, you know, how do you get to um, a faster cycle time and whatnot, there's a lot of things that you have to consider. Um, how many stations do I need? How many parallel stations do I need? Um, on and on and on. So I think that, quite frankly, 
when when he's looking at unboxed, he showed something. Has he ever shown you something and then changed his mind? Did he ever say something like, uh, oh, I am never going to make money on charging um, because uh, I should just give that away. Did he change his mind? Yep. And I'm never going to go into service because, or I'm never going to charge. People shouldn't even have to pay for service. Um, did he change his mind? And what did it do to his profitability went to the moon? So here's the deal. Um, he said lots of things about a lot of things. And sometimes they're the same and sometimes they're not quite the same. So I, I look at him and I say, are you pulling my chain again? You know, um, because he has a sense of humor. That's the thing. I, I like, I like, people who have a sense of humor and he has a sense of humor and who does he like to jerk around the most financial analysts and the press and couldn't make me any happier i want to i want to hit some uh, bot stuff if that's okay with you sandy i want to be uh cognizant of yeah. your time okay uh we yeah. won't we won't keep you for too much longer now you got you got stuff to do so um the bot so you you saw it in person you i'm sure you saw it uh do all kinds of stuff does it look manufacturing ready to you? Is it? Is it? Or do you think they need a, a few more stages to go through before this becomes a legitimate product they can start using in house or start selling? What was your vibe? Well, what I saw um, would be the most advanced robot I've ever seen. I've seen a lot of different ones, humanoid kind of things and whatnot. And but. I watched that uh, those robots up there dancing for I don't know how many hours, and and they they didn't need a charge. So, and then I found out that they sit down to charge. Well, that's a good idea. Um, I mean, you sit down to charge as well. Really, you're going to go and have dinner, or whatever. It makes a, you know, it makes sense. Uh, so I think that uh, the the robots are, you know, I think they're close. I I don't know if they're ready for prime time. I don't know. Again. Elon loves to jerk people around. Uh, initially, when I heard that they were at an interview and the guy, and the robots talking back, okay, caught me by a surprise. That was a lot more uh, than I anticipated. And then it turns out, oh, you're just jerking you around. Okay, fine. Again, we get back to what does he like to do? He likes to jerk folks around. He likes to have fun with people. So, yeah, so there you go. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I found it interesting how even with the teleoperated uh, bot, you you could still have a situation where you can have one person sort of uh, uh, overseeing an army of robots, let's say, right? Yeah. And then the robots can be doing autonomous work, and then when they're stuck, they send a signal to the one guy, and then the one guy fixes it, right? They intervenes or she intervenes, and then the the data is collected. And then that data collection is what makes the robot smarter over time, right? And then you introduce right. it to more and more different situations. And then all of a sudden you have very similar to how they've leveraged their fleet of cars to uh, collect the intervention data from drivers. They'll collect the data from yeah. the robots, from interventions, from humans going in and fixing the motions, right? And all of a sudden you have a leverage of three to one, five to one on human labor. And then before you know it, freaking every single food service uh, place is going to be filled with robots with maybe like four people overseeing these robots doing the work across the nation over time, right? And I'm like, holy crap, the teleoperation side of it just blew my mind because I wasn't even thinking about it from a teleoperation perspective, but the, the value is there. And I feel like the, the mechanics are there for them to execute that. It's just figuring out how to get it to production so they can make it at a, at a price that it actually makes sense for people to buy. Well, you he know? said 80 grand and that's a, that's a bargain. 80 grand? I'll take that all day long. That's less than one year for a man's labor or yeah, whatever. Yeah. That's a really, really inexpensive. And if I can teach it to do one of the three Ds, I talked about this in the other videos, but dirty, dangerous, and drudgery. If I can, uh, if I can get something that gets rid of um, anything that's harmful to a human being or something that leaves him so depressed that he got to go out and drink himself to sleep and whatnot. I'm yeah. in all day long. I, uh, uh, I think they're, they're, they're ready, pretty much ready. You were talking yeah. about, um, cognitive knowledge training, uh, with AI, um, every robot can be a little bit different than the last. So if you have 
a robot that uh, that's in your house and um, and uh, and it picks up one of your silver pieces and a Brillo pad. Uh, you have to tell, ah, no, don't do that. And the robot would then, well, why? And then you give them an answer and then, OK, fine. So it changes the program. And we did this 30, 40 years ago when we were at Ford. Uh, and believe me, Lisp was no fun. That was the AI program of the times. That that thing was no fun to fool with. But actually, we could figure out how to make that happen. Now, as far as robots being in 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 doing things, uh, and you talked about the fast food industry, I saw a thousand robots making noodles when I was in China. Whoa, a thousand. And I have a picture of it as well. I sometimes I'll pull it out when I'm talking about robotics and where they're used and whatnot. Holy doodle! All these little, yeah, it's uh, it's amazing, absolutely stunning to see how the Chinese have have jumped on this. So the Chinese are, I mean, we talked about cars, but they're way ahead as far as uh, uh, VTOL, vertical takeoff machines. They're way ahead when it comes to drones. Way ahead when it comes to the utilization of robots to take over areas where mm, dirty, dangerous drudgery, on and on and on. So, yeah, while we were sitting back sleeping and saying, hey, I got an idea. I'm a really smart executive. I'm just going to get that done by somebody else. And look at, I'll have more time for golf. And that's why I'm <laughs> telling you what, that's something yeah. I did see in here. Um, I sat in the meetings and I'm going, why yeah. am I working? Anyhow, so that that's that's one of the main reasons. Hey, yeah, I don't have to. I, I, I'll, I'll just direct them. I'll tell them, yeah, yeah, make more of those, make less of those. Okay, good. Your job is done. Now you can go and sit there behind your big mahogany desk. Yeah, yeah. damn. Hans, did you want to hit something here before uh, we let Sandy get back to his very busy day? Uh, yeah, you haven't I asked was... anything about the bus. I mean, my favorite part. I was letting Hans anyway. do it. <laughs> uh, okay, good, good. All right, good. Well, I actually had one more question on the bot, though, before we get to the bus. And that's, did you get to see the the third generation hand up close by chance? Or, yeah. Um, you did. Okay. I'm curious what your your takeaways from the the next generation hand were. Well, I saw, I saw the Utah hand when it was first designed. And I thought that was amazing. However, the Utah hand couldn't have two hands working together. Uh, that didn't work. But the... Uh, thing that I saw, and I'm not 100% sure whether it was tricked or fooled on this, but I saw the robot pick up a bolt and a washer and a nut and screw it together from both sides. I was really impressed. That was about as impressed as I can possibly uh, be. Uh, there's nothing, uh, nothing out there that can do that kind of stuff. Yeah, nothing. So I was pretty impressed. Of course, All right. I did hear that, well, I am a writer <laughs> and uh, I'm an analyst and I heard their comments and I, that's why I don't, it's hard for me to look at TV anymore. So well, yeah, let's get <laughs> so. to the, the robo van and tell us about your, your impressions. What do you think is the best use case for it? Uh, I know you've said that it can be used for lots of things. So yeah, tell us all about it. Well, um, I think that uh, we could do a whole session on the uh, on the robo van, but uh, I see this as the absolute best way to get from um, Detroit Metro to downtown Detroit. I'll take that all day long. I don't want to sit in a stinky diesel van anymore. Uh, I won't take it. Um, and there's no train that goes from from the uh, Detroit Metro to the uh, to downtown Detroit. If I have to take something, it's going to be some kind of a bus, and most of the buses I think suck. That thing, I loved it. I I liked everything about it, and I like the fact that it doesn't have a driver because I've had too many drivers that maybe had had a liquid lunch or something. I don't know, but I I'm scared to death of uh, some of the some of the folks that uh, that drive the buses, as it were. So I think that uh, commuting buses, um, school buses, I mean, that thing can work anywhere as far as I'm concerned. Other thing that I was looking at was this could be, um, this could be the ideal party bus. And I mean that sincerely. 
Um, <laughs> I spent a lot of time in the back of vans doing parties and whatnot. That thing, oh my God, especially if I could tint the windshield or the windows, you know, you flip a switch and it, it turns black and, and no one, shit's uh, going to get no wild witnesses. in there. <laughs> yeah, it could get really wild in there. I, I loved it. And then from a family standpoint, most people would rather have a dog than a kid nowadays. So, uh, we don't have huge families, or at least not too many that around it where I am. But, uh, man, if you had, uh, uh, if we go back, uh, uh, to the way things used to be and, uh, grandma and grandpa work, uh, are, are living with you and whatnot. Something where you've got an extended family kind of, um, situation. And I already know that we're doing this because I've seen a couple of houses. I used to design houses too, but a couple of houses that, that are designed and, um, and it's a huge house. It's because grandma's there and grandpa's there. And Aunt Sally and her husband are there. And then the five kids from what all that would be the ideal situation. We're going out for dinner, everybody gets in it, and renting something like that. Oh, I mean, you you pull up in that thing and and you've arrived. I love the style. I'm a big fan of Art Deco. That's about as deck. And nobody does anything that looks modern anymore. Nobody. Mid-century modern was the last time that you saw anything that looked modern. And I didn't really care for that. <clears throat> but I really do like is um, I really like uh, uh, Art Deco. So for me, that thing was, there's so many applications, so many usages. And yeah. I can't believe that moron said, well, this can't work because look at how close to the ground it is. And I, this is, you know what? That shows you, this is a bourgeois. <laughs> there's no question <laughs> in my mind. This guy is bourgeois. And oh, oh do we have to explain that to the anybody that's watching? Anyhow, <laughs> look it up, kiddies. Anyways, I don't think you do. <laughs> anyway, they haven't even modern buses. Yeah. What are you crazy technology, me? Sandy? It's just like fut totally. so futuristic. Uh, oh my god! And Air suspension is, making, is alien technology. <laughs> yeah, yeah, an alien technology, right? I tell you, at the yeah. end of the day, when I hear that kind of stuff, and that guy's probably making million, two million bucks a year. Yeah. <laughs> And that's what comes out of his mouth and somebody's buying it. Holy <laughs> shit. I, it's just all wrong. Anyway. What's interesting about the bus for me. And I, and I see Eric's uh, telling me in the, in the chat here in, in uh, the recording software that you you love that bus. You I love do. that bus. But, but the, the thing that I really, I, one of the, one of the theories I've had for a long time was in, in the world of self-driving technology, uh, you can, you know, and, and this is a lot uh, inspired a lot by our conversations, uh, with you, yeah. it, the, the form factor inside of a self-driving transportation unit, if you make it big enough, the, the type of variations you can have are nearly endless because you just completely right. change the dynamic that a, <laughs> that a human has with getting from point A to point B or just being in a location that could move around, let's say. Right. And yeah. so. What are the variations you can have inside of, of that specific box? To me, they, they, there's a lot. And so I would love to get your take on this. Now that we've seen this bus, what is the likelihood that this type of form factor, this, this product from Tesla, closely mirrors the airline industry's model, which is Boeing and Airbus and whoever else, they make the shells, they sell it to the fleet providers, and the fleet providers customize the hell out of it, right? In whatever form factor they want for the clientele, and then they slap it on Tesla's network to to actually sell it to the public. They make yeah. money. Tesla <laughs> takes a cut from it because it's their product. What do you think that is yeah. like the long term of this? That's not thing? long term. That's 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 right. That's now. how they launch it. Okay. <laughs> They'll probably launch it in two fashions. One will be something stock and standard. Uh, but I'll tell you what: you can make a shitload of money, a tremendous yeah. amount of money by selling uh, open platforms. Um, and when you do that, you go to, to a rigor, you know, somebody who's going to dress this thing up. And quite frankly, when I looked at it, the first thing I thought of was, I like the idea of, um, you know, having, um, having an RV. I don't like the idea of this. I, I don't want to drive the damn thing, but if I had that and I tricked that out as an RV, I don't have steering wheels in the way. I don't have cab over anymore. 
And think about this. So Aptera, I've mentioned their names like 50 times here. Shout out Aptera. Has a, well, <laughs> they just got stuff that's modern. And by the way, we were, uh, we were on a panel and we were talking about, um, uh, you know, who is your competition? And, uh, and Aptera has none because there's nobody with solar panels and three wheels and all this. Think on this. If I had that great big giant ass bus, think about the panels on the roof. Mm -hmm. Would I ever have to ever charge this puppy? If I had panels on that roof and I used it for the bus, you know, idea for the RV idea for the family home, even in Michigan, <laughs> the sun comes out every once in a while. Think on a, think about a situation where the bus runs all day long and it doesn't need a charge because the sun is shining. In California, any place, Mason Dixon South, there's a lot of sunshine all the time. This thing is, I mean, at the end of the day, anyone who's, who's making their plans or whatever for what the future might be as far as um, city busing or whatever, if they don't take into account that, hey, if I put solar panels all over the, the roof of this thing, I may never have to have a gas bill or a diesel bill or even an electric bill. Mm -hmm. That is where things really start to change a lot. And quite frankly, from what I know about, I've never really been in an RV to go camping and everything, but I believe it's drive, 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 get there, stop, um, have dinner, whatever, and yak, 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 and two days later you go again. If I'm sitting in the sun for two days and I'm not doing much except for frying eggs or, you know, keeping my refrigerator, keeping my yeah. beer cold. I mean, that's it. And that's not much of a draw. That's, yeah. that's where I think the big, uh, the big advantages are going to be. And, and, and it looks like, and correct me if I'm wrong, that so the manufacturing cost for this thing, because you are yanking out so much of those uh, systems that would apply to a, uh, like a, like a, like a bus format today, which would have the steering wheel, the pedal, all the shafts, and blah, 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 blah. You yank all those out. You move to a very modern way of manufacturing this thing. My guess, your energy density on the batteries uh, in the next two, three years, whenever you start production for this thing, are going to continue to go down, especially with 4680 continuing yeah. on the path down, so on and so forth, all the different innovations. I mean, it, again, this is going to be, this is like a, you know, putting your finger in the wind and trying to figure out, but... To me, it feels like the manufacturing cost for something like that can't be any more than eighty grand around that, or, or do you think it's going to be more than that, less than that? Like, well, I do don't. Do I, it, it, everything's going to be dependent on what you stick inside that vehicle. And yeah. by the way, you mentioned just the shell. I'm talking just a, just a shell, but let's yeah. talk forty six eighty two. But go ahead. Yeah, yeah. you mentioned this forty six eighty, but um, um, I think that what we need to do is think about that a little bit because. Um, you know, that's the form factor that General Motors is moving to, or at least that's the speculation. They're yeah. going to move away from <clears throat> prismatic, and, and now they're leading the way. We haven't heard it from Biden yet, but I, you, <laughs> well, see, you, had to, you had to think about the, that. You guys are looking yeah. so damn serious. It isn't even funny. Jeez. <laughs> well, days, I mean, the Canadian joke was so over. good. The <laughs> joke was so good. It took a second for it to land. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, we're so just anyway. so used to Mary leading. We're just, you know, every time we hear it, we're just like so awestruck, yeah. you know, yeah. whenever it comes up. Yeah. I just got a, uh, I just got a um, up the tail again about, anyhow, I don't want to, I, I don't want to, what was the question? <laughs> I, as soon as the you question said the was, uh, form factor. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're, you're all good. The, uh, the, the cost of manufacturing this bus, this bus oh, yeah. shell. Yeah. 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 Like if, if you were to I take a, yeah. A wild gas gas. Well, the volumes might be lower to start with, and you might get up to 80,000 or something like that. But I believe that uh, it's going to drop significantly. And it's going to be all dependent on what did you buy. If you're just buying a shell with a frame and some batteries and stuff like that, 80 grand seems like a really high number to me. But unless you're on really, really low volumes, and I don't think that that's what's going to happen. I think that's going to be a very high volume kind of product. But if you, um, if you start looking at things you could put in it, I think the sky's the limit. I mean, when I was working with, um, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the guys that make Greyhound buses, I've forgotten their name for a minute here, MCII. Yeah. <laughs> when I was working with them, I mean, 
uh, rock stars will get a bus tricked out million bucks easy, two million bucks. It's not hard to wow. jack the prices up way up. Um, uh, and, but you know, it's a slightly bigger, bigger product, but you could stretch that thing if you wanted to. And, um, and, uh, yeah, it, it, it wouldn't, it, it depends a lot on, on, uh, on the options that you put into it. Got it. <laughs> but, yeah. but the margins on this thing are going to be insane. They're going to be ridiculous. Outrageous. Yeah. It'll make, uh, it'll make pickup trucks, uh, green with envy. <clears throat> wow. Okay. That's, uh. Okay. Yeah. Well, it looks like they have a very good uh, future ahead of them. <laughs> oh yeah. I, yeah. I yeah, again, I mean, I can already hear all these uh, chumps that are well, how come I'm not making a 200 billion dollars? Well, it's because you're dumb. I mean, and you got no guts. I mean, no. Yeah. So, but at the end of the day, um Elon doesn't make a whole lot of mistakes, and the reason for that is because he says yes a lot. And uh, mm -hmm. if you say no a lot, you lose, but you'll get promoted. But if you say yes a lot, you're going to make enemies up the yin yang, yeah. and uh, but, and you'll make a lot of money, a huge amount of money. Yeah. Uh, before we get to last thoughts, uh, Sandy, I know uh, I know Monroe is working on a Cybertruck report. Uh, can you talk to us a little bit about that and uh, what's going on over there? Well, it's it's done actually. Um, we're selling it. Um, yeah, if uh, uh, if any any of your audience is interested in in buying it, um, you can. Uh, uh, I think it's on leandesign.com. I think if you if you go to our website at leadesign.com sales or something at leadesign. I don't know. I but uh, uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's being heavily purchased uh, outside the country. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's uh, I wonder by which country. <laughs> Let's just say the Orient, because uh, okay. <laughs> out east, yeah, the canceled. You're guys. canceled, Sandy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, but I Anyhow, mean, you guys yeah, put in a lot of work in that thing, though. I mean, oh, yeah. that that's been something y'all been working on for a long time. And I, yeah. the what, what's interesting about the Cybertruck is there's so many new technologies in that thing, and there's so yeah. many. New, I mean, I mean, what is there something that you can say about that that is not well known that wouldn't destroy your ability to sell that report? That nobody knows about or do you want to keep oh, it for the well, report? first off um yeah. the the report um based on what our our readers uh, or our customers wanted they were not interested in the interior they didn't care about the exterior the panels nothing what they wanted to know about was the smarts they wanted to know about how does self-driving work um rear wheel steering how does that work what kind of electric motors did they have what what I mean, these are all double and triple wound uh, motors, so they're they're double and triple redundant because each motor can be a, not another motor. It's it's a uh, it's phenomenal the way we put all that stuff together. They wanted to know about um, uh, the forty eight volt system. How far does it go, and do they have other systems in there? But they do. They, I mean, twelve volt, thirty six volt. Uh, three volt. I mean, there's a whole bunch of different voltages that go in there. Uh, and the other big thing that they wanted to know about was um, was the Ethernet loop. How much did they get rid of CAN bus? Nope. But uh, <clears throat> and we all that stuff's in there. Plus, every circuit board's been analyzed. I mean, if you're if you're into designing a new vehicle, um, you should have this data. If you're not, I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah, and pull out the old uh, breadboards and crank another one out, but uh, you'll be just falling further and further behind. But uh, the folks, the folks in Japan, Korea, China, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, they're buying. Um, so far, no sales for Europe, and uh, as far as yeah. I and maybe one sale for for um, in North America. Well, we'll put a link for that in the description on the comment section below. Oh, that'd be great. If, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's the least we can do. Um, no, the, uh, you should also tell us about the uh, new line of products that consumers can buy from you as well. New line of products? <laughs> the, I the, didn't... the wheels. Oh, jeez. Sandy oh, doesn't even God. know his own oh, products, cut bro. That. <laughs> cut that part out. Uh, if it, if, Hey, if Armin sees this and I didn't say anything about it, yeah, he'll he'll go crazy. He'll tear me out. Guy's twice as big as I am. Yeah, the wheels. Uh, so um, 
uh, video went out today. A what? The, the, the new wheel video went out this morning. Oh, did it? Yeah. Oh, wow. It's Is that the one showing the... The new sizes, yes. The new size. Okay, so... All right, so we put out the sizes that we thought and then found out everybody wants smaller wheels. They want more tire and less uh, less issues. The the um, the bigger diameter wheels uh, seem to have um, uh, a real problem chewing up tires. So uh, we're dropping them down a smidge so people can get the uh, the new sizes. Um, and uh, I don't know if you saw the video, but but um, we decided. Armin and I decided that uh, the the one that you know uh, caught most people's attention is it's a Tesla wheel and it says Tesla it's got the Tesla logo right on it and uh, and then the other thing that we saw was uh, well it's a cyber truck and it, and it, and it can take around so why don't we design a wheel like that so our wheels are forged and machined they're not cast they are quite a bit stronger and they use a different aluminum. Uh, that way we can make them lighter. These are for people who are enthusiasts. And if they hit a curb with uh, other kinds of wheels, uh, you're probably going to have a problem. With ours, uh, not so much. So uh, the big thing though is if the Cybertruck can take a bullet, well, what's the most vulnerable place? Well, that would be the the wheel itself. How do I, how do I guard the brake system? Okay, well, um, if you have a look, you'll see me, uh, take, uh, nine shots, nine or I can't remember how many bullets I had in that thing, but nine or 11 shots, uh, on this, uh, on this rim and, uh, or this wheel, I should say. And, uh, I took 10 shots and then I, uh, I wanted to see what would happen if, uh, if I hit a bullet in the same port. So the other ones are just bang, bang, bang. And then the last one I thought, what will happen? So now I did it dead nuts and I went right through the, um, right through the, uh, uh, right through the wheel. Uh, but you have to get two bullets identical, identical in order to make that happen. So that doesn't happen very often. So that's the, um, that's kind of like what we got going on right now. Awesome. Um, and, uh, that, that sold really well. I even bought them. <laughs> They're going to, they're going, to, they're going to be going on my cyber truck. And um, actually, I was thinking, uh, somebody told me something, and I'm not sure if it's true. Did, did Elon Musk give uh, 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 Trump a, um, uh, a cyber truck? I don't know. I don't know if Elon did, but I know there was one where he was on a podcast, and the podcast guys gifted him a sack with like that picture of him with his fist in the air and the American flag oh, yeah. and whatever was wrapped with that. Yeah. And he's like, e this is an Elon truck. I think just the guys bought him a truck and they gave it to him. But I don't know if Elon oh, wow. uh, personally gift. I, I haven't heard. I don't know. I'm not really sure. But I'm, but I'm sure he's got a cyber truck from those guys, though, the podcast guys. Uh, yeah. Well, maybe I should gift him a, a wheel. wheels instead of wheels. Yeah. I'll have to Mr. Talk President, to if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you happen to be watching, let me know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, yeah, I got to check with Armin. I'm not sure which side of the fence he's on, but, okay. uh, if it's, if, if we're both on the same side of the fence, maybe, maybe we could, we can give him a uh, wheels. And, uh, if it's not, nice. then we'll, we'll give him a discounted price or something. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, if you go and have a look, uh, you can see me in real time popping the, uh, uh, popping a, a couple of caps into the, um, uh, in, into the wheels and they, all they do is they leave a little, like I, I used hollow points and uh, they were, you know, copper wrapped. So they, um, um, uh, they're, uh, they, they should go through pretty much anything, but yeah. They are, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah, we'll make sure to have a link for that in the description below in the comment section as well. So okay. Sandy, thank yeah. you so much for making time for us, man. It's always, yeah. it's always a pleasure. My birthday brother, uh, January <laughs> yeah. 19th, That's right. the greatest, the greatest day in the world. Absolutely. Sandy and I were born. And uh, yeah, any, any parting thoughts before I will let you get back to your very busy day? Well, the other thing that was, uh, I'm not 100% I'm sure, but I think that um, uh, the other two guys that were born on the same day, uh, one is, um, is uh, uh, General Lee, uh, General Robert E. Lee, and the, and the other guy was um, uh, uh, Martin Luther King. Uh, yes, Martin Luther King Jr. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. 
the four of us. We're just making history, exactly. Sandy. Exactly. We're just here to make history. Exactly That's right. right. Yep. Exactly. Yes, sir. Thank you Alrighty, so much, man. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Always right. appreciate you. I'm okay. going to end the recording here. And then if you can, if you can hold, make sure.